This week, Kingsley brings us up to speed with his look at the fast-paced, mechtastic experience of Titanfall. We chat to Victor Kisley from Wargaming.net about just what that studio has been working on lately, and we find out whether or not everything really is awesome in the LEGO movie video game, which has finally hit Australia. This is Player Attack. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this week the gaming world was rocked by the news that Facebook had bought Oculus VR, creators of virtual reality headset, the Oculus Rift. The deal, which cost the company a mere $2 billion in cash and stock, sees Facebook positioning itself as more than just a social networking site. Founder Mark Zuckerberg observes, The future is coming and we have a chance to build it together. Unfortunately, things didn't go quite as smoothly as both companies might have expected. While Oculus was expecting a certain amount of backlash over the business deal, Oculus Rift creator Palmer Lucky reports his staff have been receiving death threats and harassing phone calls ever since the announcement. The negative response has also extended to game developers, with Notch reporting that he has scrapped early plans to put a free version of Minecraft on the platform, explaining simply, Facebook creeps me out. In other news, things are getting shaken up over at EA's Origin department. First off, the original Dead Space is currently available for free via digital download, thanks to the company's new On the House program. The deal will be sticking around until May 8th, so while it is a limited time offer, it's a fairly lengthy period for you to work with. Three years On the flip later, side of that though, Origin is going digital only, completely ending its physical game service as of April 4th. To a Many people didn't actually realise that Origin sold games on disc, so this news is confusing a bunch of gamers. It's actually very simple. Just 1% of Origin's customers were using the service to buy games on disc, meaning that, for 99% of us, nothing will change. If you really want an EA or Origin game, you'll have to head to your preferred gaming retailer or settle for a digital copy. It's been a fun week for DLC and expansions. The latest batch of new content has been released for Sonic Lost World and it's officially marking the end of any rivalry. The Legend of Zelda Zone invites everybody's favourite blue hedgehog to don Link's traditional green cap and tunic before racing through Zelda-inspired settings including Hyrule Field and Dodongo's Cavern. Similarly unusual, Call of Duty Ghost has revealed its next DLC update, set to start one of my most beloved 90s action movie icons. Predator. Predator appears in the Devastation map pack, out now for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. It's coming soon to PlayStations 3 and 4, as well as PC. However, the prize for the oddest announcement this week potentially goes to Bethesda and the team at Machine Games, who have put together an awesome limited edition for Wolfenstein The New Order. It doesn't actually include the game. The Panzerhund edition, named after the game's mechanical killer dogs, contains a gorgeous Panzerhund statue, a bunch of secret war documents, vintage postcards, dog tags, embroidered patches, and a steelbook case for your copy of the game, but you'll have to go buy the software somewhere else. It's been nearly seven years since the world fell in love with Portal, and it seems there are still gamers who don't know the story of Shell and GLaDOS. This week, Valve and NVIDIA have announced they're bringing Portal to an all-new platform, the Android-driven handheld NVIDIA Shield. While being able to solve anti-gravity puzzles and bend physics on the bus is pretty awesome, this is particularly interesting as it suggests the Source engine can now run on ARM processors, meaning other Valve games could well pop up on tiny, portable machines in the future. Mobile phones, perhaps? And in the meantime, if you want more than 100 games for the bargain basement price of absolutely free, you should think about paying a visit to the Pirate Bay. I'm not kidding. The Pirate Bay bundle, curated by Moshboy, contains 101 of the finest small, weird video games, all wrapped up into one gigabyte-sized download. Some have been created for game jams, some weren't, some are made by names you might recognise, some weren't, but all of the games are free. It's totally legal and this is the only place you'll be able to find some of them. For more information on any of these stories or to keep up to date with the latest gaming news, head to playerattack.com. But for now, stick around, we've got plenty more still to come. And World of Tanks is, is doing amazing things. We were at E3, we saw that it's been announced for, for console, it's coming to Xbox 360, you must be so excited. Uh, 
Yes, you know, uh, this little game, well, which used to be little four years ago, gave a tremendous growth to our company. Just imagine, four years ago, when we, four and a half years ago, when we were starting, we were just 60, 60 uh, employees. Today, we are 1,800. Uh, by the end of the year, I think we will hit to 2,000 employees. We have 15 different locations around the world. Uh, we have offices in Tokyo, in South Korea, uh, in Singapore, uh, a bunch of towns in Eastern Europe, uh, Paris, you know, for European operations, uh, Berlin, Nicosia, that's Cyprus, uh, London, uh, San Francisco, Chicago, and uh, Seattle. That, that, that's quite a touristic tour, huh? But that's not all of the places that, that Wargaming is based, is it? You've, I hear you've got some people in Australia working for you too. You knew, you knew. Yes, this, this, is, uh, this is real. 45 best engineers, software engineers in the world working for Wargaming out of uh, Sydney, Australia. So what happened is five years ago we licensed Big World Technology, which lies beneath every game of ours. So World of Tanks, World of Warplanes, World of Warships, the mobile version of World of Tanks, even World of Tanks Xbox 360 edition they all use Big World as the middleware, as the base, as the, as a, I would say, a backyard uh, platform, uh, and that's the best platform in the world. So we were licensees, but we grew so big to you know 65 million registered players around the world, and you know we have to we have to grow and the game, the first of the tanks and, and planes and and. Uh, uh, players require frequent updates. We, we are releasing updates for World of Tanks every two months for almost three years now. So that all requires immaculate intensity uh, of uh, production. That's why we had to acquire them. Free to play means you download and play and 75% of you will never ever pay, that's our statistics, right? Nevertheless, you get this same level of uh, support, the same level of community management. I mean, we, we, we look at your tickets with your problems uh, with the same, uh, with the same uh, rigorousness as, uh, as a pain user. So, this is a very fair ecosystemic balance. School kids don't pay. They just play more to get the same results as I get. Also playing a lot because you know you, you have to train, you have to be good at this game. But but but, however, I can purchase a little bit of time advantage in terms of longer strategic uh, leveling up uh, with a little bit of money. I just told you two movie tickets were like three beers. I have to boast, I have to boast. It says, New York Times said, no blood, no gore, just megatons of steel. We made it in a way that, you know, we, we are morally responsible people. I'm, I'm not joking now, right, okay? So, and this allows us to have uh, age rating of, you know, six or four or nine in, in, in different countries, even such strict countries as Germany. So a father can play with his son. Anyway, they do plastic models together from time to time and they can play, you know, uh, tin soldiers on, on, on the floor. This is a medium which will bring together closer uh, father and sons. Uh, we also are working World of Tanks Blitz, which is a mobile version for your iPad, for Android device, for your iPhone uh, and stuff like this. Uh, it's going through friends and family testing inside Wargaming. The biggest challenge, of course, is controls, because you have to move a tank, rotate the turret, zoom in, zoom out. It's a little bit too much than your typical Angry Birds uh, controls uh, kinda can allow you. But we threw our best people onto that challenge. Wargaming is is known for solving unsolvable problems in terms of controls. So it will be it will be done. 
I don't have the exact date, maybe at the end of this year, maybe early uh, uh, next year, but it's coming. Mobile is going to be huge and while you are away, you'll, you'll just entertain yourself on the bus in a taxi while waiting in the queue with short, the same short, fierce, vigorous uh, tank battles, but on your mobile device. We also have, uh, and right now it's going, uh, closed beta World of Tanks Generals. This is a totally different game. Yes, it's about tanks, but it's a trading card game. Think of uh, Dungeon and Dragons style. So there's a playing field, there are stacks of cards. There are, of course, tanks are main characters. You also have, like, uh, boost uh, cards like support, like air support, like recon, like artillery squads. And, uh, well, believe it or not, I played that game while on the airplane. Emirates, it's a 24-hour flight in here, so Emirates, when you fly from Dubai to Melbourne, they allow you, like, for $20 to have the satellite internet. It's enough, it's, it's not enough for action game, but it's enough for, you know, like email and messaging. And also playing World of Tanks Generals, played two games. One lost, one won, but that's, that, that's a fast game, that's a fast uh, train card game. Uh, World of Warships right now, it's too early to do any public uh, display of it. It's bound for year 2014. Big, huge boats with big, huge guns and torpedoes and uh, aircraft carriers and waves of bomb dive bombers. Man, like I'm playing it as, as a part of our testing and uh, 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 assessment kind of process. I'm Admiral Nelson now. <laughs> Admiral Nelson will be my nickname probably, if it's not taken. Captain America The Winter Soldier is in cinemas April 3 and thanks to our friends at Marvel we have a very special prize pack to share with you. It's packed with all sorts of goodies including a t-shirt, a cap, headphones and even a coaster set and ice cube tray and it could all be yours just for watching Player Attack and answering one simple question. Head to playerattack.com, follow the links to the Captain America competition, fill out your name and contact details and answer the question. You're in the running for this amazing prize pack. The competition is open to anyone in Australia and New Zealand and runs until April 18, with the winner announced on Player Attack shortly after. For the full terms and conditions, see our website. After a frustrating two-month wait, the LEGO Movie has finally hit Australia just in time for the school holidays, bringing with it TT Games video game adaptation. The LEGO Movie video game, obviously the developers had run out of creativity by the time it got to the naming stakes, takes exactly the same storyline as the film. So if you haven't yet sat down and watched the adventures of Emmett Brokowski, go do that now before picking up the game. Good morning, apartment. Ready to start the day. Jumping jacks, hit them. One. Two, three, I am so pumped up! Yes! Overpriced coffee. That's $37. Awesome! Everything is awesome. Oh my gosh, I love this song! It's cool when you're part of the team. Everything is awesome. Ah, no! Guys, wait up! <laughs> Where am I? Come with me if you want to not die. So, Emmett is a construction worker in Brickburg when he discovers the piece of resistance and is tasked with fulfilling the prophecy of the special. The rest of the film and the game follow his adventures, preventing Lord Business from freezing the world with the Kragle. The film takes 90 minutes or so, the game takes much longer, but essentially they both tread a lot of the same ground, even down to the game borrowing serious chunks of footage as cutscenes. Okay. Ah, no, wait, guys, wait up! Okay, I'll meet you there. Where did it go? Oh, there you are. Hmm. <laughs> I think I heard a whoosh. The levels have been lifted liberally from the movie and some work better than others. There is an unfortunate amount of repetition and the developers don't step outside of the film's comfort zone at all. So what you see is pretty restricted to the environments you saw on the big screen. There is an assortment of puzzles to solve, bits and pieces to collect, and all the usual stuff we've come to expect from TT Games' amazing take on the LEGO franchise, but this time it's not quite as solid as we've seen before and it's without an established comic book brand to fall back on when the story drags. However, and there is a decent sized however here, the levels themselves are pretty excellent. 
All of the settings have been designed to look like they've been built 100% out of Lego blocks. Previous games have resorted to shiny set pieces, pre-molded rocks and a carefully applied paint job, but the Lego Movie video game has taken that extra step, making everything out of bricks, including the ground. If you're in a slightly cranky mood, spending a little while running around and smashing everything in sight is a pretty good bit of a stress release, and it will earn you more than a few extra coins as well. You play initially as Emmett, but all that changes as you progress through the game and unlock additional characters. These might be as simple as Frank, the foreman Emmett's boss at the construction site, or something more fantastic like Wonder Woman, Uni Kitty, or Benny the Spaceman. Hopping between characters is a simple matter of either a button press or a pop-up menu, which can get a little frustrating when there are five or six options, but works nicely when there are just two or three to choose from. Not only is there a fairly even mix of genders, as well as a decent number of non-human characters, but TT Games has made the interesting decision to give all female characters special powers. The girls can jump higher and perform nifty parkour tricks, leaving their male counterparts down below in the dust. In addition to that gender bonus, each of the characters has their own special ability, with most split into two groups. Emmett is an instruction build character. He can build anything you want, as long as you've got an instruction booklet to go with it. These instruction booklets appear page by page, dotted around the game as printed flat tile bricks. There's not a sheet of paper to be seen. Your task, of course, is to collect them all so that the next project can be completed. The actual building strategy employs a brand new timed minigame where you pick out the proper Lego blocks from an assortment shown on screen. This is not an opportunity to experiment. Choosing the right piece will score you a decent pile of in-game credits. On the other hand though are the master builders, characters like Wildstyle, the mysterious girl with a purple streak in her hair. They need no instructions and can pluck bricks from all over the place, whipping them up into creative, useful structures like catapults, laser guns and bounce pads. If a level seems impossible, it's always a good idea to smash everything in sight and then get wild style to see if anything can be built from the pieces. These two very different playstyles highlight the very different ways of approaching real world blocks. Well, the real world in general, actually. Whether you're the sort of person who meticulously and unthinkingly follows the instructions, or if you're more of a free spirit, the LEGO Movie Video Game teaches that we really need both of you. It's quite deep, really, for a game that rewards you for exploration by handing out fancy pants. I think I got it, but just in case, tell me the whole thing again, I wasn't listening. We know how much you love gadgets, how much you love good audio, and how much you hate it when your controller batteries run flat. Thanks to our friends at Turn Left, we have a pretty great little Geotech prize pack to give away to one lucky player attack viewer. We've got a shiny new EX03 Bluetooth PS3 headset, an AC1 PS3 charger, and just in case you thought we were playing favourites, an AC1 Xbox 360 charger as well. Wanna? All you have to do to win your very own Geotech prize pack is head to playerattack.com, follow the links to the Geotech competition, fill out your name and contact details, and enter this week's key feature, which is on your screen right now. The competition is open to anyone in Australia and New Zealand and runs all the way up until April 11, with the winner announced on Player Attack shortly after. For the full terms and conditions, see playerattack.com. Sacrifice has bought us this one day. He's XIMC. I don't trust him, and neither should you. War changes a man. It's a hard life keeping the peace on the frontier. Everyone has their limits. Titanfall really was one of the big surprises at last year's E3, and the hype about it was out of control. Often, when this happens, the reality of the game can't live up to the gamer's expectations. 
In Titan's first case, it lived up to what we were told, but left us a little wanting around the edges. It's the best new franchise in the first person shooter genre to come out in many years. Not only does it have some of the fast gameplay the old school frat players love, but it also brings giant mechs into the equation. Single player fans, take note. Titanfall is really there for the multiplayer. Yes, it does have a campaign mode, however the game would have been better without it. All it is is a multiplayer map rotation with some short irrelevant talking and filler between the map loadings. To top this off, you play one nondescript team who hates the other team for a few rounds, and then you swap to the other team who hates the previous round just as much. Why do you hate each other, you might ask? Well, I'd like to know that too. The game doesn't really tell you. It also doesn't care if you win the round or not. There really is no point in playing the campaign except to obtain some mechs when you finish it. I couldn't help but think it would have just been easier to hand these bonuses out as part of the ranking system. Multiplayer is where this game lives and where it shines. You play a double jumping, rule running pilot with up to 11 other players on the map, with much less powerful AI reinforcements to help the course. You get to pick from a variety of weapons, running from self aiming handguns up to rocket launchers and sniper rifles. And of course, there is your Titan. Titans appear later in the round and completely change the dynamic of the game. You go from a typical first person shooter to really protecting yourself from the full force of a Titan attack. Saying this, Titans will die. Even a pilot without a Titan can still kill one fairly easily by either shooting it with an anti-Titan weapon or more fun jumping on the Titan's head and then shooting it repeatedly in the circuitry. There are a few game modes to choose from including Capture the Flag, Hardpoint Domination and Pilot Hunter, which is similar to Attrition. The gameplay is fast, really fast, and if you're a fan of the old school Quake Unreal games, you'll love this. When you aren't in your Titan, you are pretty much doing parkour around the map. If you stop, you're almost guaranteed to be killed, real fast. Like all modern games, there is also a ranking system. As you rank up, you have access to many boosts, items and customizations. Ranking is easy, with the first few games you'll rank up a level almost every round. Which is good as you'll need those boosts to fight off the much higher ranked players you'll come across. However, there are still some faults which need to be fixed. Firstly, matchmaking. The first round I played was completely unbalanced. I was level 1 and no one on my team of 6 was over level 10. However, on the other team, no one was under level 20. And this of course destroyed the first impressions of the game for me. No one wants to walk into a game and lose round after round, and this is what happened. It was 8 games before I was even competitive. This is something that could be easily fixed by improving the game matchmaking. And then there's the waiting. Titanfall rounds aren't long, in fact they can be very very short. So when you have to wait 2 minutes for the next round to start, it feels like eternity. I'm pretty sure you could go down the pub for a beer or two between rounds. And I don't understand the need for this, especially on PC. Titanfall requires a fairly high spec computer to play. Is there really any need to wait that long for players to be ready? It's almost like it's a method to reduce overall server load by putting people into a waiting queue. Titanfall is an earth shattering game. It looks spectacular and fully utilizes the source engine behind it. And with the addition of Australian game servers, it plays really well. It's great to see EA supporting a new IP and I love the fact that there have already been patches released to make it even better. Although I think the longevity of the game could be improved by mixing up gameplay some more, if you love a good, fast first person shooter, you'll definitely want to check out Titanfall. And remember, you can get this free with an Xbox One at the moment, so if you're still trying to work out which next gen console to get, you might want to check it out. And that's about it for this edition of Player Attack. Thanks for watching. Next week, we look at a couple of next gen games with decidedly last gen graphics side scroll and shoot em up Mercery Kings and perspective bending puzzler Fez before taking a look at the future of music gaming with Disney's Fantasia Music Evolved, currently in the works at Harmonix. In the meantime, you can catch us on playerattack.com, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you've got something you want to say, send us an email mailbox at playerattack.com or just hop on our forums. Till next week, I'm Jessica Citizen and this is Player Attack.